All right, so today we're going to be talking about rate of perceived exertion, or RPE. So this is sort of an introduction to auto-regulating your training. The technical definition of auto-regulation is a means of selecting and adjusting training intensity based on your performance during a given training session. So basically, the ability to go heavier or lighter based on how you feel. To really understand this, we have to get into two sort of abstract concepts, but I'll bring it all back together, don't worry. So the external load is the absolute magnitude of the stimulus. This is the same for everybody. For example, the weight on the bar. The internal load is the individual response to the external stimulus. So that external stimulus, but processed through the individual. And these lead to fitness and fatigue adaptation. So fitness being the positive training-induced changes and fatigue being the negative training-induced changes. In the fitness fatigue model, we see that it's a little bit more complex. So you don't always realize performance improvements because there's so many variables that go into it. And also fatigue is not just a reduction in performance we can have improved performance in the presence of fatigue, and we can also have reduced performance even when fatigue reduces. So it's not so simple. It's not so black and white. Enter RPE. No more rigid exercise prescriptions. So I'm not just going to give you a weight. It gives us the ability to quantify subjective feedback and predict that internal load. It allows us to lift heavier on days we're performing well and less on days performance is decreased. It is a realistic and flexible training approach that is consistent with the unpredictable nature of life. RPE, it's a one to 10 scale, but anything five or below is a warm up weight. It's not heavy enough to be counted as a work set. You go up to RP six, it's fairly easy, like a warm up, but a little whiff of difficulty. RP seven, now we're getting no slowdown in bar speed. So the reps don't slow down, but it's getting slightly difficult. RPE 8 feels heavy. You're starting to feel that it's actually heavy weight, but, and there is a moderate slowdown in bar speed, but not super significant. RPE 9, very heavy, significant loss of bar speed. Uh, the reason I'm not going up to 10 is because that's just an absolute max effort, and most of your training is not going to be there. I know it can seem scary and overwhelming, but do not fear. Evidence suggests that beginners can accurately employ RPE within a few weeks looking at the Helms et al. study in 2017, which is in the references. Over time, you will develop and refine this skill. So you're going to miss the mark when you're first starting. You're going to overshoot, you're going to undershoot. But over time, you're going to get better, and you're going to get into that sweet spot. Let's try this in a practical example. So in your program, you'll have something like this. Barbell back squat, one set of four at six, one set of four at seven, one set of four at eight. So you have three working sets with a top set or your heaviest set of four reps at RPE 8. This means that the load selected for each working set should get heavier. Let's say, all these numbers are arbitrary, that your four rep max is 135 pounds. For practical reasons, all the warm-up weights and warm-up sets will be denoted as RPE less than 5 or RPE 5. Your first set is going to be a set of either five to 10. We just want to get the blood flowing, do some squats. This can be with an empty bar. It can be body weight. It can be a goblet squat. Like I said, we're just getting some blood flowing. We want to get you prepared for the movement you're going to be doing. So 10 reps at 45, definitely below five. We're going to make a pretty big jump. So up to 65 or relatively big jump. And then we're going to do five reps because we want our rep scheme to get a little bit closer to the working sets we're going to be doing. So five reps at 65 pounds, still below an RP5. Now you notice we do uh, four reps at 85, and this one is an RP5, but it's not that much less than five. So at this point, you want to start making smaller jumps. So we're going up to 95. Hey, look at that. You hit your RP6. Congrats. That's your first working set. And now we, we need to hit an RP7. So we're going to make another small jump. Let's say... 95 to 105. Now the bar still doesn't slow down, but it's it's definitely more difficult than that six, which felt a little bit closer to a warm up. Cool. You hit your RP seven, um, and now we need something a little bit heavier. So four reps at 115, and that's your RP eight. It feels heavy. The bar speed starts to slow down in the last few reps, and then you're done. Congratulations. So hopefully that kind of explains what what I'm talking about when it comes to RPE. Please ask questions if you have questions, and I'm very happy to answer them. 
but it's it really just takes some time and practice like anything.